In this lecture, we will review environmental and epigenetic influences on gene expression. According to Developing Child at Harvard.edu, new scientific research shows that environmental influences can actually affect whether and how genes are expressed. In fact, scientists have discovered that Early experiences can determine how genes are turned on and off, and even whether some are expressed at all. The old ideas that genes are set in stone or that they alone can determine development have been disproven. Nature versus nurture is no longer a debate. It's nearly always both. And just a reminder in regards to the whole nature versus nurture controversy in psychology. Now, this is according to psychologytoday.com. The expression nature versus nurture describes the question of how much a person's characteristics are formed by either nature or nurture. Nature means innate biological factors, namely genetics, while nurture can refer to upbringing or life experience more generally. So again, when referring to nature versus nurture, nature is biological or genetic influences. And nurture basically is environmental influences that begins in the womb. Traditionally, nature versus nurture has been framed as the debate between those who argue for the dominance of one source of influence or the other. But contemporary experts acknowledge that both nature and nurture play a role in psychological development and interact in complex ways. So again, the old ideas that genes are set in stone or that they alone determine development have been disproven. Nature versus nurture is no longer a debate. It's nearly always both. During development, the DNA that makes up our genes accumulates chemical markers that determine how much or little of the genes are expressed. The different experiences children have rearrange those chemical marks. This explains why genetically identical twins can exhibit different behaviors, skills, health, and achievements. Okay, so these are some key terms to know. First, genotype. Genetic makeup of a person containing both expressed and unexpressed characteristics. Phenotype, observable characteristics of a person. And of course, epigenetics, mechanism that turns gene on or off and determines functions of body cells. Now let us correct some popular misrepresentations of science. Until recently, the influences of genes were thought to be set, as I stated earlier, and the effects of children's experiences and environments on brain architecture and long-term physical and mental health outcomes remained a mystery. That lack of understanding led to several misleading conclusions about the degree to which negative and positive environmental factors and experiences can affect the developing fetus and young child. The following misconceptions are particularly important to set straight. Contrary to belief, the genes inherited from one's parents do not set a child's future development in stone. Variations in DNA sequences between individuals certainly influence the way in which genes are expressed and how the proteins encode by those genes will function. But that is only part of the story. The environment in which one develops before and soon after birth 
provides powerful experiences that chemically modify certain genes, which in turn define how much and when they are expressed. Thus, while genetic factors exert potent influences, environmental factors have the ability to alter the genes that were inherited. Although frequently misunderstood, adverse fetal and early childhood experiences can and do lead to physical and chemical changes in the brain that can last a lifetime. Now, in curious experiences such as malnutrition, exposure to chemical toxins or drugs, and toxic stress before birth or in early childhood are not forgotten, but rather are built into the architecture through the developing brain. The biological memories associated with these epigenetic changes can affect multiple organ systems and increase the risk not only for poor physical and mental health outcomes, but also for impairments in future alerted capacity and behaviors. The epigenome can be affected by positive experience, such as supportive relationships and opportunities for learning, or negative influences, such as environmental toxins or stressful life circumstances, which leave a unique epigenetic signature on the genes. These signatures can be temporary or permanent, and both type affects how easily the genes are switched on or off. Recent research demonstrates that there may be ways to reverse certain negative changes and restore healthy functioning, but that takes a lot more effort. May not be successful at changing all aspects of the signatures, and it is quite costly. Thus, the very best strategy is to support responsive relationships and reduce stress, to build a strong brain from the beginning, helping children grow up to be healthy, productive members of society. Okay, so let's review some material again in regards to epigenetics and genetics itself. According to Psychology Today, each person's DNA lays the groundwork for the development of physical and psychological characteristics, providing complex instructions for the creation of proteins and other molecules. But the manner in which these instructions are used can be modified by various factors. The chemical modifications that influence gene activity in this way are collectively called the epigenome. These modifications occur naturally and help to stir development. For example, they enable cells in the brain and in other parts of the body to perform specialized roles based on the same underlying genetic code. But the epigenome is also susceptible to influence by exposure to toxins and other environmental factors. So, what is the difference between genetics and epigenetics? Well, genetics is the study of genes, the units of a person's genetic code made from DNA and the traits that they influence. Epigenetics focuses on the physical changes that affect how the genes are expressed, whether, for example, a particular gene is active or not, and thus whether particular proteins are produced. So, how do epigenetic changes affect gene expression? Epigenetic changes do not actually change the underlying DNA sequence of genes. Instead, they involve the attachment of chemical compounds to the DNA. The prefix epi means above or upon. 
So just remember, the old ideas that genes are set in stone or that they alone determine development has been disproven. Nature versus nurture is no longer a debate. It's nearly always both. In my next lecture, we will review prenatal development, birth, and the newborn.